Hi, folks. My name is Greg Turner, the radiology coach. My job is to demystify the enigmatic world of x-rays. Radiology departments all have similar equipment to generate x-ray examinations for patients and customers. These basic components include high-powered transformers, x-ray cameras, generators, cassette holders, digital plates, and computers. But there are several components that should be included in every department and really every exam room. Some of these are obvious, while others might not be so much. For radiology managers, it is important to take note of these as they can be critical and will prevent unnecessary issues in the future. So grab a pen and paper for these six things that every medical x-ray department should have. Number six, equipment handbooks or guides. This may seem like a tangential item that only biomedical engineering should care about or the local x-ray company. But having access to this allows for your staff to become adept at operating the systems. Very few companies require that employees read operational handbooks, but this simple task can eliminate significant errors and save money and time in the process. It is not only appropriate to have the user manual on hand, but if a separate maintenance guide is available, that would be equally appropriate. There are some very easy inspections and quite frankly, frankly, fixes that can be applied in-house on x-ray systems. This also allows the department the flexibility to elicit help from outside engineers who may or may not be familiar with your brand. The manuals would be instrumental in aligning these specialists with your center. Number five, protective aprons. Lead aprons seem as though they would be a staple item for all departments, but this simply isn't true. Many managers don't put a lot of weight on the necessity of these protective items, but federal and local regulations mandate protection for every department. Keep in mind that there are aprons for patients and then there are aprons for staff. When staff uses the same aprons for different populations, there is an increased risk of nosocomial infections to both workers and patients. Additionally, the aprons can be made of resistant material besides lead. There are highly specialized x-ray aprons made of a matrix of materials that are lighter and more easily manageable. But in any event, lead or unleaded aprons are a necessity. Number four, x-ray calipers. In this digital age, computers assist x-ray operators in acquiring optimal films. This allows latitude in the amount of x-rays that are applied to patients. In other words, if patients are underexposed or overexposed, usually the computer will compensate for it and still produce an adequate image. However, when the appropriate amount of x-rays are not utilized, then there is x-ray artifact or deviation in image quality. X-ray calipers are a physical measuring tool that will help specialists in applying the most optimal amounts of radiation to their patients. The technician will measure the patient, then use a chart to correlate the size of the body part to set a standard of radiation. Number three, technique chart. Technique charts allow x-ray operators to understand how much radiation to apply to a patient's body parts based on their thickness and size. Many charts yield information in the form of small, medium, and large, while other charts are based on millimeter thicknesses according to a measurement acquired by calipers. Technique charts are often required by states to be within sight of an x-ray console. They are invaluable for new employees or students. Because different departments have different components, many charts vary from one to the next. For this reason, we here at the Radiology Coach have produced a scalable technique chart that adjusts to any radiology department. Operators can simply make minor changes to the document and it will make corrections for all other techniques. We will be making this available soon, so be on the lookout for our Making Technique Charts video or contact us here at info at the radiologycoach.com. Number two, pregnancy posts and questionnaires. As is the case for technique charts, it is imperative that clinics acquire signage for females who may be pregnant. These signs can be found online or at any x-ray dealership. They are simply warning signs that state the hazard of x-ray exposure. 
Any females above the age of 12 should be asked about their pregnancy status. Forms should be readily available and signed by the individual stating their affirmed condition. The posting, the questions, and the documentation should eliminate all doubt or circumstances that might arise, which in turn will minimize liability to the practice. Number one, proof of state registration and current documentation. All x-ray systems are registered with the state and the FDA. When the x-ray system is installed, forms are filled out and sent to the state and federal agencies. Additionally, there are often state forms from DHHS, environmental control, or radiation safety sites that need to be remitted as well. Once the units are registered, there can often be annual requirements to keep the units certified. This comes in the form of resubmitted documentation, annual fees, and additional paperwork. It would be prudent to add that employee certifications or registration documents that prove their qualifications to administer x-rays in their state is recommended. These documents may need to be updated annually or biannually as well. By remaining current on all documentation and keeping these forms in a clear and organized space, managers can confidently escort state inspectors through their departments and keep offices running efficiently and stress-free. That concludes this segment on six things every medical x-ray department should have. If you like this presentation, please select the subscribe button below this video. You can also tap the bell next to it so that we'll notify you when other great videos have posted. My name is Greg Turner, and I'm the Radiology Coach. And remember, mark my word and mark your films.